We're talking about Dan Wilson. Dan Wilson. Yeah, Dan Wilson actually, uh, after the Niagara Action for Animal Suit goes down, there's a split within that group because some people wanted to counter suit and other folks didn't. And Dan actually leaves Niagara Action for Animal Suit not long after that. And uh, he's not involved, unfortunately. This becomes like a huge problem when you're thinking about campaigning. Like, what's the most hated uh, place in regards to animals in Buffalo? Is it the shelters? Oh, okay. Well, this is kind of like the yeah, yeah. What's the SPCA for? A while. I think it's the Buffalo. It should be the Buffalo. It's antiquated. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be the elephant habitat. Yeah. Oh, actually, that. Yeah, but just before we talk about your question specifically, um, you know, if someone picked the Buffalo Zoo as a campaign, what you want to do is you want to start with the best institutional memory that you can have. So reach out to anybody who's ever organized against it or anyone who knows anything about the park and then go from there. But well, it's like so send the elephants to the sanctuary. Yeah. That's it, what we want to do. It's so important to be able to have that kind of multi-generational kind of space. Because what has happened basically, I'm reading that for so long, and which we tried to combat with this campaign specifically, is that a couple of people were organized for a couple of years and they'll have some success and then there'll be a drop off. And then it's a completely new crowd of people and it's like constantly reinventing the wheel. Whereas if you can actually get a steady stream, you know, from year to year to year to year, and people are constantly passing off all this institutional memory and knowledge from the get-go, like you're, where you start from is just like, bang, you know, I can get in on this issue right away. Um, a lot of the tactics and things that we do um, on site are based off of advice and knowledge of what people like Dan were doing, you know. Um, well, I remember him from years ago when I used to come to those demonstrations, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I just wondered, you know, what Mm -hmm. Gary Francione what happened to Dan Wilson. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I keep hearing about this thing called Friendship Cove. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that and is it actually <laughs> friendly? <laughs> <laughs> Friendship Cove is just one of their exhibits. So they have like um, specific names for like the belugas and then they have specific names for where they house the dolphins and uh, Friendship Cove mm -hmm. is was in addition, where they brought in their beluga exhibits. Um, you can basically come and see, like, I think they have about 40 belugas now. Uh, you can feed them and kiss them. And, yeah. Um, or no, I'm thinking of Arctic Cove, which, yeah, this becomes really funny because it's not, you know, the Arctic. But um, Friendship Cove is, I think, was the name that was given for the orca exhibits. All of these things, again, I would like, you know, Tompkin Village, like, simple PR, like, it's the happiest place on earth, right near the graveyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you do anything else with other uh, animals in captivity, like zoos in the area, mm -hmm. or are farms that, that treat their animals there mm -hmm. um, terribly, or uh, kennels and things like that? Mm -hmm. Do you get involved in those things? Too? Yeah. So, this is a, something that I could give a whole full talk on. The way that uh, the Marine Land Animal Defense Campaign is organized, it's organized on a spoke model. So basically just envision a, a bicycle tire, right? Or a, or a tire, and you have at the hub, it's called the Niagara Animal Defense League. And then at the hub is where we store all the resources. So all of the spokes, which would be our working groups, all have the same access to all of these you know, different resources. So Marine Land Animal Defense is one spoke of the Niagara Animal Defense League. Um, some other things, Fur Free Niagara, uh, exists there, so we demonstrate against fur stores in the area and fur farms in the area for industry, combat animal testing, we have anti-vivisection campaigns against the university, as well as pharmaceutical uh, companies in the area. Um, what am I forgetting, folks in the back? Animal specific? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's it on animals. animals. Yes. Our other ones are all more social justice. And yeah. Um, but we do like, uh, so for an example that I can give, and this is a really good um, based upon the talk, QP1287, uh, the staff at the, our Humane Society in St. Catharines are unionized. They were out on strike for 90 days, and this became a huge issue within the, within the animal advocacy community because they basically split right down the center. Um, groups and board members from other groups were going into the shelter and volunteering because in their mind, you know, the animals were in dire need. They didn't understand that they were scabbing and they were actually prolonging the strike and making it worse for animals, right? We were the ones who actually took a position for QP1287 and at the end we did a lot of the kind of um, dirty like garbage work to get help get that strike ended. 
uh, and get those workers back on site. Yeah. If there's animals, if there's an animal issue in Niagara, like we're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't we don't let things pass. Yep. Yeah, I've got two questions. I thought marine land was not in Niagara Falls, but further in Canada, and the aquarium was in Niagara Falls. You said, what they advertise. Mm -hmm. I see it on highway something. Mm -hmm. You're saying the authentic real marine land has always been in Ni Niagara Falls? Mm -hmm. No, it's always been on oh, the same side. Oh, Niagara Falls, Canada. Niagara Falls, Canada, highway. yeah. Okay, yeah. now I've got the other one. Mm -hmm. The question I have, okay, He's killing the deer. Are these deer that are being killed, you said, are being used for for people consumption? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the infected animals, the animals that are sick, that either die or they kill them, mm -hmm. are those also being used for animals? No, so it was the land animals specifically, this became a sticking point in the 90s because John Holler was trying to get in with the Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquariums because if you have AZA or, or a CASA membership, you can then trade animals between that kind of network. And only, you know, if you pay into that membership do you have that kind of ability. They wanted it in the 90s and CASA came back and said, look, you can't, we can't have a facility with deer where you're just like butchering them. Um, it's not going to happen. Um, so that no longer happens to our knowledge. Um, yeah. And as far as, you know, infected animals, everything else, like, they just get thrown in to the pits. Um, they have now, with the Ministry of Environment, put orders on them to basically overhaul their whole process in how they bury animals and how they keep records on that. Um, and it's, like, extensive, and it's going to cost them a lot of money. Right now, at the same time as well, the OSPCA has orders against marine land, which is a similar situation. Um, they got away with not getting fines, but fines are only so much. The OSBCA orders them to, you know, drastically alter their facilities. It's going to cost them more than what it would if they actually just fined them. So that's kind of where we're at. And um, I think you'll see a big difference in what happens with the deer as a result of all those stories coming forward. Because, you know, fundamentally, like, how can you even, you know, already the environment there was just basically a barren like area for the deer and they're actually not fed intentionally so that um, folks will pay for feed to then hand feed them it's like five bucks right so you have these like scared starved animals that are like running up to people just so they can get food already it was a really messed up situation and then like with the knowledge in your head that like oh this like this deer has like a has like a boil right or has like something wrong with it so i wonder if it'll be here tomorrow I don't think that's going to continue, but we'll see. Yep. Hey, when I was a kid, we went to this place that was somewhere near there called African Lion Safari. Oh, Is, does that still operate? And what's yeah. the deal with how they treat their animals? Yeah, African Lion Safari is up near like the Hamilton kind of Cambridge mm -hmm. Lambro area. Um, when you're talking about pressure campaigns, it's really important to keep your focus centered on one place at one time. Because we could basically campaign against all these places at the same time, but have a less effect on all of them. And the great thing specifically about having success in marine land is that um, everything that we've been successful with there has reverberated through that industry. So now the Canadian Association, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums has had to actually sit down with the Ministry of the Environment to detail a complete overhaul policy in how these facilities actually bury their animals and how they document their animals being dead and what they die from, which you know didn't happen previously. Um, another really cool thing that happened uh, happened with the veterinarians, right? So now, if you're a veterinarian and you're one of your main clients is a zoo in Canada or in, in Ontario, and all this stuff came out and your license is basically on the line, uh, it sends a message back to them, like, you have a duty to report, right? That's at African Lion Safari. Um, there's another zoo in the Niagara region called uh, Safari Niagara, similar situation. And we actually know um, through people who have worked in those facilities, because a lot of people have come forward from them, that all these facilities basically took this story and then cleaned their marks up, like, immediately. And then tried to implement the same strategies that Marine Land already had, so. Um, employees are now facing non-disclosure agreements and they're vetting employees a lot more heavily because they don't want people to get in there and uh, you know, document undercover evidence. There's another kind of level um, 
in a dialogue where a lot of the Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquariums facilities are um, publicly funded zoos, and um, they're taking a lot of heat. So a lot of the zoos in Canada right now that have elephants, there's very intense campaigns uh, against them because you have elephants basically in northern climates. And they're combining with, um, you know, conservative um, politicians who have basically an austerity agenda. So like, you know, why are we paying for, you know, the zoos? What, this makes no sense. Let's get this off the budget. So the Canadian Associ Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and even the AZA in, in, uh, in the U.S. right now are like, they're facing some of the biggest battles they've ever faced. The entire zoo industry is like watching all of this. There was another employee who came forward from a zoo in Ottawa uh, in response to the marine land stuff, detailing like dead animals left in cages and a whole bunch of what about Zoo Check Canada? Are they still pretty good? Yeah, Zoo Check Canada still exists. Um, they actually um, organized very hard on the issue of marine land for about a decade, in between like nine, nine, the mid '90s to about 2005. And then at that point, they think like you know we've put so much time and effort into this, and we haven't really got a response. But they come back into this issue as the ex employees come forward because they have again that institutional that institutional memory where they can say, look, we had a report in 2001 and we said all this stuff no one wanted to listen to us right um, they pushed really hard for um, changes in legislation to basically for exotic animals so they're pushing for legislation that would really through this issue take up the bottom end of the roadside zoo industry yeah. but could potentially strengthen a place like marine lands yeah uh, you said the contracts have gag orders in them are you using that fact as part of the campaign against the places Oh yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah, we use uh, you know non-disclosures. If anyone who puts non-disclosures out, like that, just inherently signals that you have something to hide. Like, <laughs> if you really have nothing to hide and nothing to worry about, like why would you ever make that a part of you know hiring someone? Um, the last trainer, uh, Christine Santos, she actually gets fired because she is pulled into a meeting. Uh, with Marineland's lawyer, just ha who just happened to be in the neighborhood. And uh, they put forward a document on the table, and it was basically a document. They wanted her to sign that she had never seen abuse or neglect at Marineland. She refuses to sign, and she's fired right after. Yeah. So she's actually, her countersuit includes um, unlawful dismissal. And it is well. Oh, I just wanted to mention um, to anybody that's probably a little close to us, um, but there's an interesting connection between um, Marineland and Canisius College. And I just wanted to mention, um, you know, I run a group called Animal Allies of Western New York, and we're trying to somehow find ways to, you know, work in solidarity with what you guys are doing over there. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to go about doing it, but what the deal is, is that Dr. Michael Noonan has been conducting research, um, observational research, but for 30 years he's taken his students with the tuition money at Canisius College and also outside grant money um, and takes his students there to observe these animals in captivity suffering. I mean, I can only imagine the, the video footage that he has of um, some of these hideous situations, but just to let people know, we're going to be probably mounting some kind of form of a pressure campaign against him in the school just to take that one way that they can kind of point to him and say, oh, everything's cool because yeah. we've got, you know, scientific research and that's yeah. another reason why we're helpful to the community or whatever. As far as academics go, Newton is their biggest apologist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. And he makes his students sign those um, things as well. And he, he's very careful on who he chooses to let go there on his research team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was supposed to be a part of it and I went there and he just lock, locked me out and he would not mm -hmm. let me in. He's like right here. Gates here. I'm like, just open the door. No, you can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Animal Allies, Western New York. Uh, people should get involved. With what's going on there? I love Western New York. This place is awesome. <laughs> Any more questions? Thanks so much, everyone who came out tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.